<laughs> hey, could you back up a little bit? You're a little too close. You're in my space. Just kidding. Actually, what's happened is that because of the weather and the fact that here where I live, they've uh, decided to remodel outside, so there's a lot of noise and a lot of uh, background <laughs> construction going on, we've had to move inside and temporarily we're in your face <laughs> or you're in mine I'm not sure which but with Proverbs 3 5 and 6 we've been gradually transitioning over from having to make sudden adjustments and changes and well frankly this is just one of them so hopefully you know we can put up with each other being this close <laughs> or or in reality kind of you can see all my wrinkles but uh, in sharing and caring about the Lord, you know, we should never be ashamed or afraid of being who we are, whether we have our face painted like a, a barn that needs painting so that we look younger or whether we are old and getting gray and, you know, maybe not combed our hair a certain way, you know, like, oh, I got a cow lick. But rather, we should be honest with one another. We should be truthful. We should be real. As real as we are with Jesus, we should be with each other. So, in respect to that, we're not afraid to share this close or this intimate or perhaps this real. But in Streams in the Desert today, what is the date? I have to keep looking over at the computer in order to tell what the date is. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I have read somewhere of a little bird that will never sing the melody his master wishes while his cage is full of light. He learns a snatch of this, a bar of that, but never an entire song of his own until the cage is covered and the morning beams shut out. A good many people never learn to sing until the darkling shadows fall. The fabled nightingale carols with his breast against a thorn. It was in the night that the song of the angels was heard. It was at midnight that the cry came, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Indeed, it is extremely doubtful if the soul can really know the love of God in its richness and in its comforting, satisfying completeness until the skies are black and lowering, until the storms of life come. Light comes out of darkness, morning out of the womb of the night. James Creel in one of his letters describes his trip through the Balkan states in search of Natalie, the exiled queen of Serbia. In that memorable journey, he says, I learned for the first time that the world supply of, Adar of the world supply of attar of roses comes from the Balkan mountains. And the thing that interested me most, he goes on, is that the roses must be gathered in the darkest hours. The pickers start out at one o'clock and finish picking them at two. At first, it seemed to me a relic of superstition, but I investigated the picturesque mystique and learned that the actual scientific tests had proven that the fully 40% of the fragrance of roses disappeared in the light of day. And in human life, in human culture, that is not a playful, fanciful conceit, but it is a real, verifiable fact. In other words, most of what you accomplish isn't done when you think you are at your best, but it might be when you're at your worst. <laughs> Why? Because, you see, when you're suffering, you try less and you depend on God more. When you're, oh, so satisfied, you're doing more with what you already know and less upon what you don't know. And so there's not as much dependency on faith and trusting in the Lord with all your heart and leaning not in your own understanding because you really have it all down. You got your your organizer out, you got your little notes, you're all ready and prepared to give the evangelistic outreach speech, to give the Sunday morning sermon, to do the thing that you planned out and coordinated that you know ah, by heart I could do it without thinking. But is that what Jesus wants you to do? You see, sometimes the memories that are generational that people will remember for a lifetime happen when you are at your weakest when Jesus shines through the most when you don't have it all together 
but when God has you perfectly in his hands. So don't be afraid to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't be afraid to not lean in your own understanding, but to in all your ways acknowledge him and let him direct your path. Because if you do, it's like it says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, he will.